Hi, I'm Slider, and uh, this is our Friday night in property discussion because we decided to discuss the movie we just recently saw, Spider Man. And with us as normal is Brandon. Hi, guys. And we've got Tyrone. Hello, how's it going? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and defer to uh, Tyrone on this one. Uh, go ahead and uh, just let us know what you thought of the movie. Well, um, this is, you know, The Amazing Spider-Man, and at first I had a lot of reservations because we just had a Spider-Man movie like four years ago, so it's uh, it's hard to want to go see a movie that you you feel like you've already seen the the trilogy of. Yeah, we definitely saw that when we you know went to the theater and. It wasn't full, even for opening night. Well, it was a weird opening night, too. I mean, uh, how many movies open at midnight on a Tuesday? Um, I mean, it was, it was a little strange. Um, but, uh, Brandon, what do you think? I have mixed feelings about different things in the movie. I mean, overall, I, I enjoyed it um, for what it was, and I, when I saw the movie, I was trying to pretend like the other Spider-Mans didn't exist, although it's hard. <laughs> Not for me. Um, <laughs> so, my, my feeling on it, um, and, and it, it's kind of a mixed bag, too. My overall, if I had to, you know, give it a rating from 1 to 10, I'm, I'd have to go with a 6 or a 7. Um, not because I didn't think the movie was good, but uh, aside from some special effects stuff and a little bit of story that we're going to try to not go into tonight, uh, I didn't see anything I hadn't seen before. And while that is almost to be expected because it's, it's Spider-Man, it's an established story that we know, um, I believe what this was was an excellent setup for a new franchise. This was a great way to reintroduce a character for this new run. Uh, the, the movie itself was, was good. I enjoyed the movie, but it was just, it was very familiar. Um, and uh, in fact, I even had to educate myself a little bit because uh, if you remember, Brandon, I was a little shocked. I'm like, where the hell is Mary Jane? And yeah. you, know, we, you had to tell me, it's like, oh no, uh, Gwen was always his, his first girlfriend. Uh, and that was something I was unaware of. Uh, but you were also wrong too, because Gwen was not his girlfriend in high school. Girl, Gwen was his first girlfriend in college. Uh, I actually looked that up. Ty, yeah. Ty said that, not me. Yeah, that was me. Um, it was, yeah, I thought it was Gwen Stacy was his first girlfriend but in uh, no, high school. She, but She was. She was, was his first girlfriend. But it was in college, yeah. In college, yes. Because um, I, I did some reading up on the subject, and uh, it was interesting, the background, uh, the back and forth, there's uh, some interesting history. Uh, Spider-Man was actually introduced before Marvel existed. Um, there was the company had a different name at the time. I don't recall what it is, but uh, Stan Lee was uh, was working on it, and they introduced Spider-Man in the final edition of what was called Amazing Stories. And then when they transitioned to Marvel, Spider-Man was one of the flagship characters. Um, that being said, there was there's actually a little bit of controversy over who created what, who designed what, who. Uh, uh, was really responsible for certain things. Uh, Lee has word, one version of it. Ditko is uh, one of the other uh, designers and, and writers, has another version of it. They've gone back and forth. Uh, Stan Lee seems to uh, remember everyone fondly, but not so much the other way around. <laughs> um, and uh, so there's a little going back and forth there. And uh, That could be jealousy, though. Yeah, it could be jealousy. It could, could be a lot of things. Stan Lee is no... That, that's... No, actually, this, this not right now is the first time I've heard of that guy, because I don't really follow up on the artists a lot, um, just kind of some of the story here and there. Well, yeah, yeah, a lot of the hardcore comic book nerds um, who uh, I'm friends with, were, you know, when I when I mentioned that, they're like, oh yeah, that's old news. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. those nerds would probably be pissed at me for not even knowing who that artist is. <laughs> so, uh, so I read up on that, and then. That's how I found out about the whole Gwen Stacy thing and what uh, um, what they were doing with uh, the characters. And, and uh, there's several iterations. That I remember we were talking about uh, the mechanical uh, spider web shooting versus the biological spider web shooting. 
Well, it yeah. turns out both of those are accurate. Um, the canon is the mechanical spider web shooters because Peter Parker builds them. He's a science nerd. He creates the formula, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then they uh, did a run, I believe it was uh, part of the Ultimate Avengers, where his uh, abilities evolved to include the biological shooting, uh, web shooting. Um, yep. so and, and it makes more sense, too. Which one? The biological, uh, in my opinion. Um, th there's, I don't know, it just makes more sense for the hero overall, I would say. Not as to, uh, uh, you know, which one came out first, because I know it was mechanical first. But I just think the biological just works better for Spider-Man. Yeah, but at the same time, you got to think, uh, you know, there would have to be some sort of, he wouldn't look normal at that point, you know. Um, well, not if it was done the way it was in the first Spider-Man movies. That it didn't uh, look that bad. It just looked like he had maybe a little, a little, you know, scar that was a, l a little circle because it went down after a couple days. True. Uh, but uh, uh, overall, the the movie, I think the the person they cast for the lead um, did really well. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the I wise cracking. Go ahead. I, I want to say I I, I kind of disagree. Why's that? He, he did very well with Spider-Man. I think Tobey Maguire did a better job at Peter Parker. And uh, give us your reasons for that. The new actor seems less geeky. He carries around a skateboard. He seems just like a skater that maybe had one guy who picked on him. That's all they really showed in high school. They didn't show anyone else really you know, picking on him. It was just him. Well, they really didn't focus on his high school experience at all. Well, right, and I'm okay with that, but he still didn't seem geeky enough. He didn't seem to know about, like, and, and really follow some of the biological stuff that was kind of introduced toward the beginning of the movie. He more along the lines of just read that formula and memorized what that formula is. Mm. It, it, it appeared he had a better memory than actually knowledge of the scientific stuff. Oh, see, now we're going back to Limitless. <laughs> I, I, that's that's why I kind of the words there, but but you 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 get the idea. I mean, it's uh, he he just appeared to have a really good memory, is all. He he remembered exactly how the formula was written down, and he remembered that key code thing. Um, so, your in your opinion, he just simply wasn't geeky enough. Yeah. Okay, I I buy that. Um, although, again, having done some of the reading. The original Peter Parker character was very angsty. He was, you know, based on an orphan, which, uh, it, it, which was part of the problem. Um, they uh, centered the story around the Peter Parker story around his relationship to uh, his family and to women. Like uh, it, the character was written to be afraid of women. Uh, he has an inferiority complex, um, and those are all things that when he dons the suit, which is part of why he's one of the few superheroes who covers his entire body, is it's to hide his persona so he can be someone completely different. Yeah, and that's actually why I like this new actor as Spider-Man. Right. Spider-Man, he did a much better job, in my opinion, than Tobey Maguire did because he brought that sarcasm and that wittiness to the character way better than Tobey Maguire did. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that was... Uh, I remember at the beginning of the movie, I was almost a little uncomfortable because I didn't know what was going on in certain things. Like, you know, the whole, I, again, the Gwen thing was something I was unaware of. So it was like, what the hell are they doing to the story? But the first time he donned that costume and, and became Spider-Man, I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, like, that put me at ease like that. The, the, the best scene for me was the, the one in, they show in the preview, so I'm not, you know, no spoilers. Um, but the one where he's cowering with the knife. Oh, yes. That was that hilarious. Was, yes. Exactly. That was perfect Spider-Man wittiness. He's like, my one weakness, a small knife. <laughs> um, it, it was. It was very funny. Uh, the crowds reacted well to it. Um, and, and, and again, uh, it wasn't something... I take that back. That wittiness, that, that characterization that he brought to Spider-Man is something that we're seeing new. For, for on, on the screen. Yeah, on the screen, but that's how the character is in the comics. Correct, on the comics and in the, co and in the cartoons even. He was, yeah. you know, kind of a smart ass, you know. Um, and uh, I'm glad they... 
Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna say uh, that that's who you know Spider-Man is. He's that witty, sarcastic superhero. And that's the thing about Marvel, though, that uh, they they're not afraid to to do their story their way on the big screen, and that's what I really like when. Um, like you said before, it's a perfect setup for a new franchise because Marvel is doing it their way. You know, that's just, that's what I really liked about the movie more than anything, that it's a good setup for their franchise. I don't like the way some of these scenes seem directly ripped off of the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. Without spoiling too much, for example... A car hanging off the bridge where the spider web attached. Okay. Um, but I also think that's iconic Spider-Man, not just the Tobey Maguire version. I know. I, I realize, but at the same time, it just seemed kind of... Really, you couldn't think of something else to not associate yourself with the movie? Well, let, let's talk about this for a second. I, and I thought this was actually really, really well done, is the mechanics of his web swinging. That, yes, right. I thought was great. The motion? I, not oh. just that. The use in general with the web. Yes. Um, the, the, the sewer scene, that was pure genius. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was absolutely wonderful. And the, the, just when you see the stills of Spider-Man drawn in the comics, he's never in that, like, Tarzan, oh, look, I'm swinging pose. No, his body's always contorted, you know, his... You know, he's got his hands almost at his midsection. His legs are raised up. Uh, and they, they didn't really show that in any of the other Spider-Mans. This one, they, I, I think the mechanics of him swinging through the city were by far the best I've ever seen of any iteration on screen. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, but like, even like I said, like just not just the swinging, just the general use. The, I mean, the sewer scene was one thing, but also just some of the way, ways he actually fought using the web. Okay. What do you guys think of Emma Stone as Gwen? I think she pulled, it, pulled a Gwen Stacy off pretty well. Now, again, not being familiar with the character, I actually really liked her. Uh, but I find I'm a little... I, I guess I got a little bit of a crush on Emma Stone. Uh, just, just got the, the expressions that, that uh, she likes, or, or that I like, rather, uh, when she smiles and when she's cracking jokes and whatnot. Um, one thing that I found interesting was that at first I wasn't sure if that was her, and then when there were scenes where there was heavy action and she was in fear, I didn't recognize her. And those were the times where I was like, is that really Emma Stone? I, I can't tell, because I'd never seen her in you know, portray that in, it, part, as part of one of her characters. Um, so I think the fact that I had that issue was quite revealing in, in terms of her, you know, her acting skill. What about you, Tara? Yeah, Emma Stone's a strong actress. I really like her in that role. Um, I think she brings a lot to the table, and I really like her as Gwen Stacy. I think um, I'm excited to see the next movie to see uh, how she evolves the role. And I want to see the conflict between her and uh, Mary Jane. Uh, I can't tell you this on the show because it would be a huge, huge spoiler. Those of you who are familiar with the Spider-Man universe, I think you know what I'm getting at. But I'll talk to you about this off air, uh, Tyrone. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty – no, I'm not going to tell you in chat because it, it, I don't want you to even react on camera so that people don't – have any idea what I'm, I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, th there are some interesting things coming for that character, assuming they stick to the canon, which it seems Marvel is, is trying to do to the best of the ability. Um, now, I, I, things that didn't work for me. The lizard. Oh, my goodness. The lizard, I, I liked the action with him. I did not like the character. He didn't look real. Uh, they tried to do a little bit of this thing that Disney does where they make the uh, animated character look like the actor. Um, and, and well, I don't mind that, like, so like in the Hulk, you know, we recognize that Bruce Banner was in the Hulk. It, that just didn't work for this character. Uh, the Lizard is a very well-known character if you follow the comics, if you follow Marvel at all. Uh, and, and he just didn't look human at all. 
uh, in terms of his head and face and whatnot. So I, I had issue with that. Um, but plus, it just seemed very cartoony. Uh, again, I really liked the action. I just didn't like the way they pulled off the the physicality of the character. Yeah, they they could have done a little bit of a better job on on that. And it's not that they can't because, you know, the Frost Giants and Thor looked fine. Right, exactly. You know, so it, it, it was something, I think, I don't know if they scrimped on it or they just they decided that that's what they wanted to do and they thought it was good enough. Um, I just, I don't know, but I, I was unsatisfied with the character of the Lizard. I was also unsatisfied, or, or not so much unsatisfied, but just I think the conflict was forced. Um, where you have the lizard threatening the entire city. I didn't think that was necessary. They could have had the same level of conflict with, you know, just, you know, Peter Parker and the lizard dueling it out in the back alleys, you know, where it's more of a whisper than, you know, uh, a national news story. Um, and, and and it would have been just as effective. Uh, you know, the, the whole thing about threatening the city with uh, the thing that I'm not going to say because I just realized how what I was going into. Um, <laughs> uh, just It was over the top, in my opinion, and unnecessary, and they could have toned it down and been equally as effective. But I think the point is to um, make you rally behind Spider-Man. You know? Yeah, and it, it did that for a lot of people in New York as well. Um, one of the newer renditions of Spider-Man has him actually coming out to the crowd like Tony Stark did and saying, I am Spider-Man, as Peter Parker. Well, he does that in when, when he becomes part of the Avengers. Um, he actually does reveal his, his persona to the world. Which is... Large. Peter Parker. They, they could be very well be going that direction. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and as I said when we walked out of the theater, I don't know how they could possibly keep these two sets of characters apart. Um, because Spider-Man was one of the main characters that did make a lot of crossover appearances into all the other character stories. I mean, he was in there with the Avengers. He was in there with the Fantastic Four. Um, he was in the uh, the Infinity Gauntlet when all the superheroes go up against Thanos. He was in. I mean, he was in a lot of different stories. Yeah, that's sort of uh, like one of Marvel's early poster boys, but he he should be in Avengers too. I I would like to see him at least swing by once or twice. Well, I believe it was you, Tyrone, that made the comment. It would have been really interesting to see not even a cameo as a character, but just to see him in the background. You know, to just catch a glimpse of him swinging between two buildings, joining the fight. Um, but not as part of the movie. I, I thought that would have been a pretty neat uh, Easter egg, if you would, for, for the audience. But they, they decided not to go that route. And uh, I don't know if they're going to go that route with the, the new movies, although I'd really like to see it. Um, but, 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 again, you know, like we're kind of diverting a little bit. Back to, to the main movie here. Um, it, I thought it started off a little slow. Um, I had some catching up to do in terms of learning about the character, so in that respect, I was it was almost like I was coming to part of it as a new fan, as opposed to you know one of these comic geeky fanboys. But uh, it, and it all worked well for me. Um, and, and as far as the the, I, I disagree with Brandon. I think he did well as Peter Parker. I think he did fantastic as Spider Man. I think it was just overall the movie was a success. There just wasn't anything. I, I was expecting to be wowed a little more with uh, something I hadn't seen before, and I wasn't. And maybe that was a failure on my part. Just I had my anticipation wasn't in line with what we were going to see. But I think they did a really good job of establishing the franchise and you know making sure that people, when they hear Spider-Man, are going to get just as excited as when they hear Iron Man, when they hear Thor, or when they hear the Avengers. Yeah, I think um, when I was when I went in there, I expected a little less. Um, I wasn't expecting much at all. Uh, it's like a storybook that you've heard over and over again. You know, you know what the story is going to be, and it really made me feel like a little kid again, watching the movie for the first time. 
when I the the, the scenes with between you know Spider Man and and the lizard, especially the sewer scenes, which I thought were very brilliant. So I really it um I want to say it it drew me in, it restored my faith in in Spider Man, and I'm just really glad Marvel just went ahead and took the reins on this one. Well, that's what I was saying uh, with the way I felt about it before was, you know, I was still playing a little bit of catch up with uh, the whole storyline when they were introducing the characters, but when he donned the suit, I I, I, I was right back to being, you know, that seven year old little kid going, oh my god, it's Spider Man, you know, it, uh, it was just, it was fun. Um, I would never take that story. Um, I just it was always a good time. Uh oh, we lost friend or we lost someone. <laughs> Brent is still there. Tyrone, can you uh, are you able to hear us? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> oh, uh, I see what's going on here. He was uh, switching his, from his secret identity. <laughs> who is this Tyrone? <laughs> so who do you think that better is? Uh, Spider-Man, or I'm sorry, as Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire, or this new actor? Apparently, we've lost him again. Hey, it's our own fact. No, I, I really like this uh, this new actor. Um, Tobey Maguire did great as Peter Parker, but he just wasn't the Spider-Man that um, that I wanted. Well, right. I just I mean strictly Peter Parker. Yeah, Tobey Maguire wins on that point, but he doesn't win the whole package. Okay. Oh, I, I, I think if the two would have been meshed, it would have been Go ahead, Brandon. better. I, I, that's all I was going to say. Just so if Tobey Maguire had played Peter Parker and uh, the new actor played Spider-Man, that's what you're saying? Yes, the way it, the way the character was played. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't feel that way at all. Again, we're we're going to have to disagree on this one, guys. Uh, I think. Uh, this, this guy knocked it out of the park. Uh, Tobey Maguire did a great job in the first Spider-Man that he did. Uh, the second one, and maybe this isn't his fault. Maybe it was the writing, maybe it was the directing. The second one was campy, and the third one was shit. Um, and, and that's just, just how I feel about it. Uh, I think Tobey Maguire ruined that series for me. I'm going to agree with you on the third one. The, the first and I, I, I think even the second one was pretty good, though, is, is Peter Parker. Well, one of the things that they did in the second one that I really disliked was, and this is just a personal preference thing, I, I don't like when they uh, do stuff like this, but uh, when uh, Tobey Maguire was in the suit and he was stopping the train or saving people on the train, right? he gets hurt. It, you know, his suit gets torn up, and, you know, which is kind of a mainstay in, in the fights, but his suit, his suit gets torn up. He gets, for all intents and purposes, knocked unconscious. And the crowd passes him along, and they're passing them overhead. And they give you the camera angle from the top. And he's just laid out in this Jesus Christ imagery, you know, with his legs together, his arms out. And it was just, oh, my God. It was so cheesy and campy. And to, to make Spider-Man a Christ figure was ridiculous, in my opinion. That has nothing to do with Tobey Maguire, though. Because at that point, he's just, for all intents and purposes... An object. This is true, um, but uh, again, Andrew Garfield just did a much better job, in my opinion, making me care about the character. Um, when Tobey Maguire did it, I was already invested because of Spider-Man. When I saw this new version, Andrew Garfield had to introduce me to this character again and some of the things that were going on in his life that I was not already familiar with, and I, he drew me into the story and made me care. You know. Um, also, oh, I was very surprised. Um, I guess I did a good job of staying away from trailers because I did not know that. Uh, of course, I can't remember his name now. Gwen's father. Uh, Dennis Leary. Thank you, Dennis Leary. I don't know why I couldn't come up with that, but uh, when I saw him, I was very surprised. I had absolutely no idea he was going to be in the movie, and I, I do like him. And I thought he was appropriate for that character as well. 
And uh, they did stick with the story because in the comics, uh, her father dies in uh, accidentally in a battle where Spider-Man is fighting foes. Not this foe, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you know, they, they did keep it where, uh, and, and they create that conflict because, you know, he does ask Spider-Man to stay away from his daughter. That's uh, it's awesome with no spoilers right there. That's part of the canon. That's not part of the movie. <laughs> well, not, not for someone who didn't know that. Oh, well, then read some comic books, you smart. Um, <laughs> this coming from the guy who didn't know about Gwen Stacy. I did it. I didn't. I, I was oh, read the, read the comic books, you schmuck. I, I didn't read back that far. So, yes, I, my schmuckdom is about at that level. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I don't think that's spoilers at all. I, uh, oh, maybe it is, but it's too late. Um, <laughs> Uh, but but it was it, it's it's storyline canon, and again I, I appreciate that I appreciate that Marvel's going through these links trying to give us and, and really that's what it feels like it's like they're trying to give me people of our generation what we saw when we were children. Um, that's something I really appreciate, but I don't know that uh, younger people are going to feel because they didn't go through that. But this is their introduction to the characters on on the scale that we're seeing. Um, I, I've tried to get my nephews into comic books, for example, and they just weren't into it. Um, they did rather go outside and play, which is great. Um, but they're not going to have that background, that experience. They're not going to have any sort of expectations to be met um, with these stories. And, and that also makes me a little sad for them. Uh, because just uh, another example on, on a movie which... <laughs> I don't want to go too far into it or off topic, but Transformers. I loved the Transformers as a child. And that first time Optimus Prime transforms on screen and starts talking, I got goosebumps and I was back to being six years old. I mean, it was wonderful. I loved every minute of it. So um, I, I hope that some of the people out there that have children now that experience this when they were younger will give their children some bit of introduction to these things before they take them to see these movies, before they have that experience, so that they can share in that. It, it's almost like a revelation, you know, seeing these things on screen in, in the most realistic way they've ever been done. And that's, and that's that's one of the things that I really appreciate about Marvel taking over this franchise because they do stick to the canon and they do stick to what you remember. Like, um, I don't want to get off topic again, but like X-Men, X-Men 2 and X-Men 3 just really broke my heart with the whole X-Men series. I mean, I just, I really wish that they just, just erase that out of my memory and just reboot that that whole thing. What about just, uh, Wolverine Origins? That too. It was just, just terrible, terrible it's in my Saber mind. Saber Tooth is his brother. What a crock. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that pissed me off. I thank them for introducing Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yes. That I have no qualms about. He makes an excellent Wolverine. Yes. Um, uh, which is why he's really the only one still making any movies out of all of them. Yeah. But, but what they did to Deadpool was was really unforgivable. I mean, it was just terrible. And I don't know why they would do such a thing to such a beloved character. I mean, he he can, Deadpool, you know, can go far in his own universe. Like he's the perfect anti anti hero, um, in my opinion, that I grew up with. And just it just really hurt watching it. It was. <clears throat> all right, so let, let's just bring this back to Spider-Man. <laughs> I, I think we, we all could go off on uh, some of the series that are out there that just were done poorly, poorly, poorly. Like, you know, let's not talk about the first Hulk. Um, <laughs> what first Hulk? <laughs> Thank you, exactly. Um, the one with uh, uh, Ed Norton? No. Well, yeah, yes, yes, that one, no. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, o overall, I think... They pulled it off. They did a good job. I'm looking forward to uh, put them furthering the story. I'm looking forward to more possible integration uh, with some of the, the other characters in the Marvel Universe. 
I'm looking forward to, to them taking back, not even bringing back, taking back some of the characters that they lost, in my opinion, you know, and, and redoing them and remaking them into what Marvel wants them to be. I, I just think that that's something that that would be that, that'll take us into the next 20, 25 years of movies. You know, yeah. if they really start going after some of their characters that that they haven't uh, really followed up with over the years. They haven't modernized. I think there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, there's 20, a lot of 20, 25 years from now, we'll be watching uh, Avengers 10. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, there's talk of uh, in the next Avengers movie, uh, Nathan Fillion being Ant Man. Uh, uh, you know, like Ant Man. Ant Man. Ant Man's all right. Ant Man's horrible. But he's one of the original Avenger, Avengers. Like he's I don't a, care. <laughs> he's, he's I just, don't care. He's a terrible character. What's wrong with his powers? I mean, they're fine. Yeah, I, I, I can tell that from the look on your face. And he's also Giant Man. Who doesn't want a giant running around New York City? That's not going to be hard or difficult to make look realistic. Well, then they can uh, do a reverse... Uh, Doctor Horrible, you know they had Neil Patrick Harris running around as a giant. Now it could be, uh, you know, Captain Ham. I mean, Ant Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that's about all the time we have. Uh, I, I think uh, I think we're all in agreement. Agreement is that even a word? In agreement that uh, it was a well done, well made movie. We all seem to have enjoyed it. We all have our qualms with it. Actually, I didn't hear anything negative from you, Tyrone. Um, I didn't really have anything negative to say. I really liked it. Like it was a, a solid eight to nine for me. Um, you know, it's just uh, I'm I'm really interested in what they're doing with the the characters because they introduce you know Flash Gordon, the the high school bully, that's you know become someone else. They you know they did uh, you know have a lot to do with Oscorp, which is uh, a bit of contention for Spider Man. So I mean. I just want to see how they branch it out and see which di direction they go. And so, uh, for for those of you who haven't seen the movie and aren't Marvel aficionados, I do have one thing to say to you: stay after the initial freaking credits. <laughs> there is more to the story, uh, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, that's, like it bothers me. Like every other Marvel movie, like there's. A scene after the credits, and it's like, that's not like that's not a big secret. But as soon as the first credit pops up, half the theater gets up and leaves, and it's like, wait a minute, you guys are gonna miss out. Yeah. yeah. So. And it, well, even not even just Marvel Studios, it's actually just a common thing to do nowadays. What other movie? Hangover. Did yeah. Hangover have a scene after? Yes. Right? Yeah, a lot of movies do have a scene after, but Marvel has consistently put a scene after, like, the initial part of the credits. And the scenes are relevant. And they're good, you know. It's, it's just not a little bonus scene. It's, uh, you know, well, the Avengers bonus scene was just a bonus scene. But, you know, for, for all the other build-up movies... All those little, those were almost a little mini series of their own, you know, to show you what was coming, and, and they, they were really well done. Uh, I just, I don't understand why people haven't figured this out yet. So stay after the frickin' credits, people. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look it up. Who what did it first? There's a lot of movies that have that do the scene after credits, though. Um, the first one I remember was a long time ago. It might uh, even be before your time, Brandon. Uh, was uh, Ferris Bueller. Ferris yeah, Bueller's I, Day Off. I, yep, I know. You know, um, but, uh, but, but anyway, I, I digress. So uh, two of us, you know, saw good and bad. One of us uh, lives in their own little la-la world. And uh, so the, the movie's worth seeing, people. If you, ha if you have any doubts, go see the movie. Uh, as, as Brandon said about The Three Musketeers, make your own decision. Don't listen to us. Um, <laughs> but de definitely go see the movie check it out if you were a fan when you were a kid it's my feeling that you're going to have a great time and, and it's just it's totally worth the money I may go see it again in 3D and I don't even like 3D 
Yeah, I'm not going to go see it in 3D. Uh, definitely do go and see it, everyone. Um, it is definitely worth the the visit to the theater. Um, I would say myself, I give it about a 7.5 out of 10. Um, and, and just in case you guys didn't get it, the person who lives in his own little world, that would be Tyrone. <laughs> So, yeah, I've always been a, a, a fan of Spider-Man, so, you know, I definitely wanted to go see it, and I'm really glad that it, it exceeded my expectation. Since I'm such a big fan, I really didn't expect, expect much, but it, it did a lot better than yeah. uh, I it thought it would. It would be nice to live in Thailand. Um, so, <laughs> uh, at any rate, that, that's our uh, discussion for tonight. We are still doing our discussion Sunday night with uh, How I Met how I Your Dragon. How to Train, how to your, train dragon. your Dragon. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and, and apologies to anyone who's been following the videos. I have not gotten this week's full episode out yet. Uh, I still haven't gotten the movie, the intro video made. So I'll be working on that, trying to get that out before we do the show on Sunday. But uh, we are DM Cluster, and uh, you can see us here on the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash DM Cluster. Uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Google Plus, we're on Twitter at DM Cluster. You can send us an email. It's uh, bmcluster at gmail.com. You could go onto our site, get our phone number, give us a call, or you could check out our new commercial that we recently put out that has our number on it uh, and, uh, and, and give us a call. And, and it is a very good thing. commercial. It is. It's wonderful. You guys should go to the YouTube channel and check it out. Uh, it stars one of our very own, and he just does a wonderful, wonderful job in the role. Uh, it's, it's a genre piece, uh, and uh, it, it's not very long. It won't take much of your time, but... I'm sure it'll give you a feeling of some sort. <laughs> and uh, at any rate, we're, we're doing that. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, so uh, on behalf of uh, Tyrone and Brandon and Dante, who's in the background, uh, Rydian Cluster, and that's Rob. Right. And we're still on air. <laughs>